That's not going to mean much to you until you get down to the level. That's right. And the camera's running, Joe. Okay, and standing by for a mark when you when you roll. Roger. Hey, your camera. Camera's loose on a swivel, Jim. No, I'm feeling a pan here. Oh, really? Oh, it's an awful fast pan. No, I just wanted to make sure I was running. Dave, you'll want to trend for uh, a course three four six, and it's about one point seven clicks to station four. Okay. Gonna go down sort of slow here, Joe. Just to make sure we uh, play it cool. Sounds reasonable. And Jim, when you finish photography, we're standing by for a description. Well, I just have the camera running, Joe. Remind me to turn it off when it runs out of film. Yes, sir. I've got a hack. About half a mag on it. Roger. And you're running at uh, 12 frames per second, I imagine. Yeah. Right. So we're going down soon, right? It's not going to be very good on the photography, Joe. So the zero phase just washes out completely. No problem, Dave. Uh, Jim might want to swing the camera around and point it more towards the right. So we're, we're heading directly downhill now. We're cross up. Okay. Yeah, I'm looking out at the... Uh, are we looking at the... The big crater dead ahead is doomed, yeah. Yeah, that should be doomed. You want to hit the uh, southern, southwest? Oh. Yeah, yeah. But again, that's, uh, you know, we didn't see the, uh, the levee or rampart on the eastern side. No, we sure didn't. So, uh, probably any place on the southern rim would be good. drive around the eastern rim of the uh, dune. Boy, there's a crater just east of uh, east of dune that looks very recent and it has uh, a great number of blocks that I can see from here. And the largest uh, from this vantage point Again, you've probably, you all probably seen it on TV. The largest crater, which was Arrowhead, we named Arrowhead, really runs east-west, which we mentioned before, rather than north-south. And on the uh, northern side of a large crater, a long gate crater, which runs north east-west, on the north side, there are a great number of blocks exposed. Roger, we copy. Tracks here as we go down slow. Rover tracks. Yeah, probably just follow the tracks, huh? Yeah, probably do. Sounds good. We know that's a fairly good route. Yeah. Okay, we're heading uh, 320, bearing 350, and range is 4.3. Copy, Jim. Thank you. Sure, it, it's bouncier going down, isn't it? Yeah.
beautiful sight. Yeah. Well, we did get the 500 stereo up there, but you got to pay it, didn't you? Uh, any idea of the dimension on that thickness? Actually, I'd estimate it's uh, relatively thin, but uh, yeah, I'd, I'd say that it's probably if you took the uh, the ridge line on Mount Hadley, <coughs> which is practically horizontal at our present position, and put that into 100 percent, then I'd say those. Uh, Lineations across there, the bedding across there, are probably like uh, a quarter of a percent, wouldn't you, Jim? I do. Yeah, certainly less than one. Yeah. Must be, if you look across the ridge line and then look at the dip to the uh, northwest there, you could count a couple hundred anyway, could you? Amazing. Uh, apparently, you couldn't see that on TV. No, not at all, not at all. Hopefully it's in the photographs, but we're marking it down nonetheless. That TV it and everything. And then if you look, yeah, horizontal, you're horizontal half, we're all the way up. I guess that would yeah. be slumping. Yeah, there, there is, I see it now, yeah. It just looks like slump, probably, yeah. Because they're discontinuous sub-horizontal, uh, lines which are pretty, pretty much uh, cross bedded if it was bedding i don't think it is it just looks like slump pattern ground and what kind of progress are you making now jim well uh, we're going at about uh, 0 0.8 clicks <laughs> no no eight <laughs> Roger, copy date. <laughs> That's almost backing up. And we're heading 340, bearing 349, range 3.9. And we're going up a slight slope, following our track. Roger, copy in every word, Jim. Keep talking. Roger, Jim, copy. And are you progressing towards Dune Crater now? Yes. 
Well, we're following our tracks. We thought when we got up here uh, just south of Dune, we'd probably head uh, north, northeast. Big boulder on the surface. Is that a foot? Okay, Jim, copy that. And just to factor into your thinking, we can afford a very short stop in the vicinity of Station 4. Uh, it doesn't have to be really very close. We're interested in either documented samples or a rake sample there if, uh, you th if you think it looks like a good area for a rake sample. Okay, I understand, Joe. But you'd still like the station uh, to be on the uh, southern rim, I would think. Sure. Probably downwind from Aristillus or Autolycus, uh, Jim, but uh, the exact position is certainly not critical. Your judgment. Okay. Okay. We'll go get some. Is the uh, about the 12 o'clock position ought to be a good sampling station? Yeah, I think you're right. Okay, we're uh, heading off now at uh, 025. Heading directly toward the uh, southern rim of Dune. Rover, this is Houston. Go ahead. Uh, Roger, uh, the mag's run out on your camera, Jim. Uh, you should shut that off. And we don't want you to stray too far from your rover tracks. Head back more or less the way you came. We have time for about a 10-minute stop someplace south and perhaps a little west of Dune Crater. Over. Right, Joe, we'll do that. We're uh, just on the rim of Dune right now. Okay, and Jimmy, did you turn the camera off? I did, Joe, but apparently it didn't run past. Uh, I still have... Uh, about 40, 45% left. 